So recently I did a review of Versace's 2016 release, Dylan Blue, and it got me thinking, why have I never done a video on the original fragrance from that line, which is Pour Homme, as you see in front of you. Um, a lot of people might not realise this, but Dylan Blue is actually a flanker to Versace Pour Homme. It's actually Versace Pour Homme Dylan Blue. Um, so anyway, what can we say about this? older fragrance that's been around for a while. Well, it came onto the market back in 2008, so 12 years nearly that it's been around. Um, but it's still a very respectable fragrance, still a nice fragrance to have in your collection. Um, what can we tell you? Well, it's categorised as an aromatic, I can't even say the words, aromatic fougere, getting tongue twisted there. Um, and if you just want the sort of lowdown on what this fragrance is and what to expect, well, it's a very clean, very crisp, sort of summery fragrance. And when I say clean, I mean really clean. I mean, if you wear this, you will smell like you've just come straight out of the shower or something. I mean, it's it's a very, um, not so much soapy, but certainly a, a nice, as I say, clean fragrance. Now, to give you a bit of background as well, this came from the nose of Alberto Morales, who is really the king, without question, of fresh fragrances. He was the man behind CK1. He was also behind Moogla Cologne, uh, the original Tommy Hilfiger from back in 1995, which also is a very um, good release, even though it's been on the market a long time. And he also created the biggest selling fragrance of all time, which is Armani's Aqua Di Gio, um, and its flank, well, it's more recent flanker as well, which is Profumo. Um, if you're into fragrance videos and you spend a lot of time on YouTube, you may also be aware that Alberto Morales is the man who helped Jeremy Fragrance bring his um, Office for Men release to the market, out to the world. So, yeah, he's um, the master of sort of these fresher office fragrances, non-offensive, clean, but standout fragrances still. So, this came out in 2018. These days you can pick this up for relatively little money, although some uh, retailers will try and charge a pretty penny, but you, I wouldn't expect to spend more than about £30 on a, a decent sized bottle of this fragrance. Um, the main comparison to this one is Allure Home Sport from Chanel, and there are pros and cons to that comparison. Uh, one of the pros is that smell-wise they are very similar. Um, they're certainly right ballpark, some of the notes are the same, they, well, like I say, they're very similar. The con to it is though, this doesn't have the longevity of Allure Home Sport. The longevity of this is quite weak. Uh, you're probably only going to get two or three hours out of this before it's faded away completely. But there's no harm with reapplying it, as I've done many times, and as you can see, I've got through quite a lot of this bottle. Um, one of the other pros, though, against the Lower Sport is, as I've mentioned, it is a hell of a lot cheaper. So if you can't afford a long Sport, you want a cheaper alternative, why not look at this one? It's um, certainly good value. Other things to sell you, well, it's just classy, it's bright, it's a great fragrance for the office. Could be a date fragrance in the summer, probably not so much in the winter, but if you're going out for, say, a, an afternoon walk um, in the middle of July when the sun is blazing, then this will fit the job. It doesn't offend anybody, and it is a surprising compliment getter. I've got a few compliments from this from people I didn't necessarily expect to get compliments from. So, well, that's pretty much it. I mean, just before we sign off, I will give you a quick run through of the notes. Um, so at the top, you've got lemon, neroli, and bergamot, which are really the key notes of this fragrance. Um, they sit along with something called rose da mai, which I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it's there. In the mid, we've got hyacinth, sage, cedar, and geranium. And at the base, we've got tonka, musk, and amber. Now, for me, I don't really get much of the base with this fragrance. I do get the top notes overall. Um, Often with fragrances you get the top notes to begin with, they dry down, the base notes start to pull through and take over. Um, but with this one, no matter what time I smell it, it's really the, the freshness of the top notes, the lemon, the roly and the bergamot that really shine through. But everyone's nose is different, so you may smell this and come out with something completely different, who's to say. Anyway, that's a quick look at this classic fragrance, as I say, it's been on the market for over a decade. But let's not write this one off, it's still very decent. And um, if you don't own it already, why not grab yourself a bottle? 
Anyway, that's all for me from now. I've blabbered on quite a bit, but please do check out my other videos. That would be very much appreciated. If you can also smash those like and subscribe buttons, I would appreciate that as well. Um, I will be trying to do quite a few more videos over the next few, we few weeks, so please do tune in where you can. Anyway, thanks and bye for now.